One of those sons was sold by the other brothers. His name was Joseph. And Joseph went down to Egypt. That's how the children of Israel got in Egypt at the beginning. Joseph went down there, and there came a famine, and all of Jacob's family was starving, and they had to go find food. And God had given Joseph a plan of how to save the corn and how to have food. Listen to me. I don't care how, how high prices get in the grocery stores. I don't care if thousands of cows do fall dead in the field and somebody killed them cows, y'all. They didn't just fall over dead. Them cow you haven't heard that report? Yes. Them cows didn't just, somebody killed them cows. And somebody had an agenda when they killed them. They're trying to create a food shortage. Anyway, doesn't matter about all that because God provides. Look at somebody and say, God provides. Where he guides, he provides. Where he leads, he feeds. Don't forget it. So Jacob was told by God, return to the land of thy fathers. This is after. He had had it out with his brother Esau and uh, he had gone down and gotten married to two, two daughters of, of a fellow named Laban. And uh, Laban had cheated Joseph ten times. And uh, Joseph had still prospered. And uh, he's come to the place now where the brothers, the, uh, his brother-in-laws, his wife's brothers, he married two women. Somebody tell me who, who was his two wives. Leah and Rachel. Leah and Rachel. That woman will go and start. <laughs> Leah and Rachel. And uh, God says to him, Return to the land of thy fathers. Now, why'd God say that to him? Because his brother in laws were getting jealous of him because he was more prosperous than they were. And so God saw the handwriting on the wall. As a matter of fact, he wrote it. And uh, so he said, you, now you go, go back to the land of thy fathers. Look how God states things. He didn't say go, go back home where you came from or go back uh, where, you know, where your mom and dad were. No, he said go home to the land of thy fathers, fa forefathers, your heritage, your lineage. So he sets about to do so. First thing he has to do is face Esau. Because Esau's still mad because he got his birthright stolen from this, this guy. Well, he gives him an offering and all that, and Esau hugs his neck and loves on him and sends him on his way. No problem. He wrestled with that angel, and God said, and the angel said, uh, well, he said, what's your name? And he said, Joseph. I'm uh, Jacob. 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 He says, well, it's no more Jacob. It's now Israel. For you have power with God. Power with God. And so, then he walked his old limpy self on back home <laughs> with his 12 sons. But I want you to notice that later on, he had to go back down to Egypt because there came a famine in the land. But Joseph had already gone on ahead by God's plan and prepared. So they end up back down there. Now, turn with me in your Bible over to the book of Genesis. In chapter 48, I want to share you some. Now, y'all want me to quit because I, 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 no. I don't want to go. Genesis 48. A.D. had to go and he's already gone. If you need to go, go on. Genesis 48. Uh, and Israel beheld jo Israel, that's Jacob's name now, Israel. And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? And Joseph said to his father, They are my sons whom God hath given me in this place. And he said, Bring them, I pray thee, unto me, and I will bless them. He's doing what fathers do. They bless their children. Verse 10, now the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them and embraced them. 
And he said, I had not thought to see thy face, nor was I didn't think I'd ever see you again, Joseph. Mm -hmm. But lo, God hath showed me also your children. And Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel's left, and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right, and brought them near unto him. He strategically put the oldest one on the right hand of his grandfather. Now listen. Verse 14. And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim, upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger. And he, in other words, Israel crossed his hands. He crossed his hands. Pulled one on Joseph. And, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly, for Manasseh was the first one. And he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day and led me. And the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless these lads and let thy name be upon them. And the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And when Joseph saw that his father's hand was laid, his right hand was laid upon Ephraim, it displeased him, and he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. In other words, I, I, this is not a mistake. I know what I'm doing. And he also shall become a people. And he also shall become great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he. And his seed shall become a multitude of nations. Mm -hmm. And he blessed them that day, saying, In thee shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren, which I took out of the hand of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. In other words, he is saying, I gave you the elder brother's portion, the double portion. He was the youngest until Benjamin came along. He was the youngest. But now he is the elder brother because it was the plan of God. Now listen. Verse 1, chapter 49. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. In other words, he's gathering all the children, and he is blessing them and laying tracks for their destiny as he passes from this life. Fathers do that. That's what fathers are supposed to do. Now, look over in the next chapter. Verse uh, is 49, chapter 49, verse 33. And when Jacob had made an end of commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded up the ghost and was gathered unto his people. And Joseph fell upon his father's neck and wept upon him and kissed him. Then, of course, they set about to, to do the burial and all that. Look at verse uh, 24 now. And Joseph said unto his brethren, this is years later after, after Joseph had lived his life and now he's coming to the place that his father Jacob had come to. He's dying and his brethren are still captives in Egypt. Listen. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die, 
and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he sware to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from hence. So Joseph died being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. But when they left, they dug him up and took him with him. For 40 years, they had a funeral procession in the wilderness until they got him back to the land of his fathers. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying God has a MO, a mode of operation. And we do our best when we are operating in God's laws. Jeremiah 7.25 since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have sent unto you all my servants, the prophets. God is generational. I'm going to tell you this. I, I don't, I'm not going to take time to read it. But in Malachi, the last Bible, of the uh, last book in the Old Testament, God says in the last two verses, I will send you Elijah. Now, Elijah came three times, which I've I don't know if I've told you this, but Elijah came through that. First time he came in the Old Testament and dealt with Jezebel. It always takes an Elijah spirit to deal with the Jezebel spirit. It takes an Elijah spirit in this generation to deal with the Jezebel spirit. Second time Elijah came was on the Mount of Transfiguration when Jesus was caught up in the Shekinah cloud and Elijah and Moses came down and talked with Jesus because Jesus was fulfilling the law and the prophets, Moses and Elijah, the prophet and the lawgiver. And Jesus was fulfilling everything. So, uh, Elijah had come the first time. Now Elijah has showed up again. Now, in, in, in the book of, of Luke, after four years, 400 years after Malachi, 400 years after Malachi, you find John the Baptist preaching, Repent, repair ye the way of the Lord, uh, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus said, if you can receive it, this is John the Baptist, or this is the spirit of John. So that's the third time he has appeared. And that began the last days. John and Jesus began the last days. Now, the spirit of Elijah is still available in this generation. Although John the Baptist died, the spirit of Elijah is still available in this generation because she's still got a spirit of Jezebel that has to be dealt with. Do you understand what I'm saying? So Elijah has come third time. And what did God say in the book, book of Malachi about Elijah? He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. Do you see that? This is a generation where we need to refine and re-establish re the fathers in the families and re-establish the reverence for proper fatherhood under the Father, God Himself. I want you to see it. It is extremely important. We have come to that time. Deuteronomy 3, 32, 7, remember the days of old? Didn't say look for new new. Thing. said, look for the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father and he will tell thee. Ask thy elders and they will tell thee. Jeremiah 6, 16. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways, see and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk ye therein, and ye shall find rest for your soul. Yes, in other words, look back yes, to generation. Because yes, they got it right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When you get away from it, you ain't right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Isaiah 28, 9 and 10. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there. It's supposed to be a, an accumulation. Yes, That's sir. generational. That's father to son, father to son, father to son, and daughters. Nobody is loved. No fathers are loved more than their daughters love them. Their daughters love them. 
daughters love their fathers. Isaiah 58, 12. And they that be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach and the restorer of past as well. I believe we're, we're the, a, a generation that's going to see this come to pass. And in, in the book of Ezra, chapter 4, verse 15, Make search in the book of the records of thy fathers, and so shalt thou find in the book of records, and then thou shalt know. In other words, go back and let the fathers tell you. Just look it up. Look what they've written. Go back and look it up and let the fathers speak to you. Listen. This is the book of the fathers. This is it. Holy men of old were moved by the Spirit, and they spake, and they wrote, and God has divinely preserved the word of the fathers. The Father anointed fathers, and they are the ones that wrote it. Listen, you cannot improve upon God's program. You can't do it better. You can't woke it better. You Listen to me. You've got to get back to God's plan. That's where your victory is. That's where your help is. He even told these people in the book of Numbers, I believe he said, he said, I want you to make a fringe of remembrance. In other words, every man shall put on the end of his garment a fringe and put a blue ribbon on that fringe and that, every time you see that fringe, it is to remind you of how good God's been to you across the generations. My goodness. What did that little lady with the issue of blood get healed by? When she touched the fringe of his garment, the hem of his garment. What was that? That was Jesus coming in order coming in the generations as he was supposed to do. It connected him to his father and his father's fathers and fathers all the way back to God the Father. He was a, a rabbi. He was a teacher. He was a prophet. He was a king. But, and he was the son of God. But he was also a father. Although he never married and had children in the natural, those 12 disciples were his sons. If Paul can have a Timothy... Jesus can have a, a John and a James that right down through the line. Fathers. Fathers. Proverbs 28, or Proverbs 22, 28, remove not the ancient landmarks which thy fathers have set. I don't care if it's the Supreme Court trying to move those landmarks. I don't care if it's the government trying to move those landmarks. I don't care if it's the president trying to move those landmarks. Uh, landmarks. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's some preacher trying to move. Don't move the landmarks which your fathers have set. You got a constitution that was written by forefathers, not forefathers, F-O-R-E, forefathers of this nation. And, and, and they were not perfect men. I don't know of any perfect men except Jesus Christ. They had their faults. They had their problems. But they had good intentions and God used them to birth a nation. This is the only nation on the planet where men decided that they wanted to start a nation so they could worship God. God started the nation of Israel, but men started this nation, forefathers, that wanted to worship the God of Israel. God will not let this country go down. He's not going to do it. This country was founded upon his blessing, and I want to tell you something. He's in it. He was in it from the beginning. He's still in it. And this country has preached the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world, and God will not take that lightly. Amen. We've dropped the ball. We've lost our way as a nation. We've messed up royally, but there is a remnant people that are still holding on to the truth, and we will not let go. Stand up with me. Sorry I went over. It was your fault.
I love the hound down. You being down here, love the hound down. I want to pray over you. Can I do that? Yes. No ministry should exist without covering. Covering has to be a covering of godly authority. I want to say something to you. I hope you understand this. A woman's gift is influence. A man's gift is authority. There are always exceptions to that rule, and there are always variations of that rule, but as a general rule, man is given the gift of authority. Woman is given the gift of influence, and each of those gifts are unique and operate. When they operate together, they are perfection. But no ministry. See, every ministry is a household. It is a minute, it's a household of faith. And every ministry needs a father and a mother. Hello. Yeah. Sometimes that has to be tweaked a little bit in one way or another. God knows how to do that. But there should be proper authority that that ministry operates on, under. And that needs to be a fathering spirit. As a matter of fact, there are many women that do not have a husband, many women that do not have a what, what we would call a proper godly uh, covering, but they relate to one spiritually that is a covering for that. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? I, I'm not saying that women can't do it and women are not supposed to do it. I, I, no, 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 the call of God is the call of God. And he calls who he chooses. And God don't ask our permission. But the fact is, it needs to be done in God's way. Amen. It needs Amen. to be covered and, uh, and, and, and released. I've, I've covered several ministries across the years. I One of my pastors died, went on to be with the Lord. His last request of me was anoint my wife to take the ministry. And I went and ordained her. And set her in order and set the church in order and set the people in order. Because uh, I knew she had a strong men, uh, board of men in that place that would be a, a buffer for her and a covering to help her to, to do what they needed to do so that she could do what she needed to do. So I don't have any problem with that. Pastor Barbara, she's a pastor. She had a pastoral group. and she, she, she But she was under covering. That man right there was her covering mm -hmm. yes. all the while. Yeah. And then she had, uh, you know, a spiritual covering as well. Of course, Tim's spiritual covering. Mm -hmm. But he's also a natural covering. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to mess with it. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people don't know this, but Tim used to box. Ooh. I bet he still could if, he, if the right incentive got yeah. But, yeah. but anyway, you, covering is of God. Yes. Father. Desperately, they fathers in this generation. Yes. I'm so blessed that I had a kind of father that I had and mother. I don't know how to relate to to this generation in some ways because let's pray. Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we come to you. We ask, Lord. To be pleasing in thy sight. We ask, Lord, that everything that we are, everything that we are becoming, everything that we have will be pleasing in thy sight and will be usable in your kingdom. Yes. Father, I pray your anointing and your blessing and your power to rest yes. upon every person in this room. Let this ministry be blessed and let it be prosperous and let it be anointed. Let this be a place, Lord, of, of, of sanctuary, a place of covering, a place, Lord, where a fathering spirit prevails and that there is a godly move of, and the gifts of the spirit will operate in this place. Father, I pray for every person in this room. 
that their personal, private destiny and anointing will bloom and blossom in their lives and that their pathway will become clear and that every step that we are to take will be uncovered and revealed to us by the Holy Spirit and that we will walk according to David's prayer, O oh Lord, order my steps in thy word. Yes. And Father, we pray that as we go forward that we may pray the prayer and, and be the influence that we need to be in this generation that would help to turn it around and help to turn it back to the foundations where where the, the word of God was was the law and where the, the ethics and where the, the values were were something that were 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 expected and a part of society where there was respect and where there, where there was uh, uh, courtesy and where there was uh, uh, all kinds of things that we could manifest in our lives yes. that would be good toward others. Lord, help us yes, reach our neighbors. Yes, Father. Father, I pray that you'd raise up fathers in this generation. Yes. Raise up fathers. You said you'd send us the spirit of Elijah and he would turn the hearts of fathers and the hearts of children toward each other. And Lord, I ask you in the name of Jesus, let us see that come to pass in great capacity. Father, we thank you for it. We call it settled and finished and done and help us to do our part. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless you, fathers. Bless you.